Numbers chapter 16 and 17, just two chapters. But what chapters they are. Welcome back, family Bible time. We are moving on in the book of Numbers and it's Korah's Rebellion. Do you remember Korah's Rebellion? Oh dear, let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray that as we read this stuff which is really overwhelming for us, we pray that you would teach us, teach us to fear you, teach us to fear and hate sin, teach us to understand ourselves and human nature, and not to be thrown off course when people behave like people. Lord, we um, pray that you would help us to be your servants and to be steady even when things are going against us and to just serve you and love you and follow you come what may we pray for jesus sake amen, amen. all right numbers chapter 16 now korah the son of izhar son of kohath son of levi and dathan and abiram the sons of eliab and on the son of Peleth, his brother, you know what he was called, don't you? Off, exactly, yes. Um, <laughs> sons of Reuben. This is actually no laughing matter, is it? I'm sorry. They took men, and verse 2, and they rose up before Moses with a number of the people of Israel. 250 chiefs of the congregation chosen for the assembly, well-known men. They assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said to them, you have gone too far. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Because they're going too far. For all in the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourselves above the assembly of the Lord? And that's funny, isn't it? Because remember, Moses was mm. more humble, more meek than anyone else on the face of the earth. And they're accusing him of the very thing that he wasn't. Do you remember that? I remember, I remember that so much with a godly, godly pastor that we had. And people would accuse him of pride. And he was the most humble man of, on the planet that we knew. And the very thing that they would... The very thing that they would accuse him of was the, was the most bizarre accusation on, on, on the planet. Anyway, this is what, this is what can happen. You, you will see it in your lifetime for sure. Verse 4, when Moses heard it, he fell on his face and he said to Korah and all his company, In the morning the Lord will show who is his and who is holy. And will bring, uh, and who is holy, and will bring near to him. Hang on. Oh, I missed a pronoun. Pronouns are important. And will bring him near to him. The one whom he chooses, he will bring near to him. Do this. Take censers, Korah and all his company, and put fire in them. And put incense on them before the Lord tomorrow. And the man whom the Lord chooses shall be the Holy One. You have gone too far, you sons of Levi. And Moses said to Korah. Just sons of Levi, not you sons of Levi. Oh, well done, well spotted. Sons of Levi. And Moses said to Korah, hear now, you sons of Levi. Is it too small a thing for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do service in the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister to him, and that he has brought you near him and all your brothers, the sons of Levi, with you? And would you seek the priesthood also? Therefore it is against the Lord that you and all your company have gathered together. What is Aaron that you should grumble against that you grumble against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and they said, We will not come up, 
Is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness that you must also make yourself a prince over us? Moreover, you have not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very angry and said to the Lord, Do not respect their offering. I have not taken one donkey from them, and I have not harmed one of them. And Moses said to Korah, Be present, you and all your company, before the Lord, you and they, and Aaron tomorrow, and let every one of you take his censer and put incense on it, and every one of you bring before the Lord his censer, 250 censers, you also, and Aaron, each his censer. So every man took his censer. You know what a censer is? A censer is, is like a, um, a little dish. Sometimes they would have it suspended on a chain or something like that, but it would be a dish, maybe you'd hold it in your hand, where you might put incense to burn incense in the dish. So it'd be like a, like a bronze shallow bowl, a bit like a, so like, like a saucer from a cup and saucer. And either you'd suspend it on chain or you'd, you'd have a handle on it or something like that. Um, so every man took his censer and put fire in them and laid incense on them and stood at the entrance of the tent of meeting with, with Moses and Aaron. Then Korah assembled all the congregation against them at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And the glory of the Lord appeared to all the congregation. And the Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell on their faces and said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, sh shall one man sin, and will you be angry with all the congregation? And they're really thinking the best of the congregation, aren't they? They're, they're, they're thinking that the congregation has just been caught up in Korah's rebellion. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Say to the congregation, Get away from the dwelling of Korah, Dothan, and Abiram. Then Moses rose and went to Dothan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spoke to the congregation, saying, Depart, please, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be swept away with all their sins. So they got away from the dwelling of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the door of their tents, together with their wives, their sons, and their little ones. And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works and that it has not been of my own accord. If all these men die, as all men die, or if they are visited by the fate of all mankind, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord creates something new, and the ground opens up its mouth and swallows them up, and all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into shale, then, then you shall know that these men have despised the Lord. And as soon as he had finished speaking all these words, the ground under them split apart, and the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and all the people who belonged to Korah and all their goods. So they and all that belonged to them went down alive into, the, into shale, and the earth, closed over them, and they perished from the midst of the assembly. And all Israel who were around them fled at their cry, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up. And fire came out from the Lord and consumed the 250 men offering the incense. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, 
tell Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, to take up the censers out of the blaze, then scatter the fire far and wide, for they have become holy. As for the censers of these men who have sinned at the cost of their lives, let them be made into hammered plates as a covering for the altar, for they offered them before the Lord, and they became holy. Thus they shall be assigned to the people of Israel. So Eleazar the priest took the bronze censers, which those who were burned had offered, and they were hammered out as a covering for the altar, to be a reminder to the people of Israel, so, so that no outsider who is not of the descendants of Aaron should draw near to burn incense before the Lord, lest he become like Korah and his company, as the Lord said to him through Moses. Now, before you read ahead, what do you think the whole congregation is going to think about that? Or did you just read it? <laughs> you didn't read it yet. What do you think the whole congregation is going to do in response? Don't read it. No, no cheating. <laughs> what? What? What are they going to think about Moses and about Aaron and about this whole... Are people going to be going, wow, Moses, you really are the servant of God? What do you think? By the sound of your voice, it sounds not. Yeah, you're guessing. You're guessing right. And it's really, really... Because you would think, wouldn't you, at that, you would think when the ground had swallowed them up and fire had come out from the Lord, you would think that people would just fear God. But actually this, this is the power of grumbling. You know, um, let, me, let me say this to you if you're watching. This kind of thing happens in churches. And... People make accusations against good pastors. Now, there are bad pastors and there are people who deserve um, to be um, criticised. But people sometimes can, can get caught up in a spirit of grumbling and complaining. And it is terrible. It is so terrible because... It makes people mad in their sin. And, and when they, when they even, even sometimes God will judge the person who's doing it, but people will still blame the godly people who, who don't deserve to be blamed. Look at this, verse 41. But on the next day, all the congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and against Aaron, saying... You have killed the people of the Lord. And, and you think, what? <laughs> how, could they, how could they even say such a thing? But that is what can happen when people get carried away with their sinful grumbling and complaining. And when the congregation had assembled against Moses and against Aaron, they turned toward the tent of meeting and behold, the cloud covered it. And the glory of the Lord appeared and Moses and Aaron came out to the front of the tent of meeting and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, get away from the midst of this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell on their faces. Poor old Moses and Aaron were always bruising their faces, weren't they? It didn't literally mean bang their face. What it means is they threw themselves down on the ground to pray. And you'll see that when people are really desperate, they'll even just, and I've, done, I've done it, got down on the floor on my face and just been pleading with the Lord, hum, humbling myself before God. And that's, that's a good thing to do. But this is interesting. Moses and Aaron do this right now. When people, the people who are against them are going to be judged by God and Moses and Aaron, think of it, are praying. Who are they praying for? They're praying for the people who are against them. Mm -hmm. Now, who does that remind you of? 
Who prayed, Father, forgive them? They don't know what they're doing. Jesus. Our great high priest, Jesus. This is what priests do. This is, this is the job of a priest is to plead for people to God. The job of a prophet is to speak to people from God. But the job of a priest is to intercede with God, to pray to God for the people, in the Old Testament anyway. And, and Jesus is our great high priest, isn't he? He prays for us. Do we deserve it? Well, no, we deserve punishment. Like these people, they deserved punishment. They deserve to be judged by God, and yet Moses and Aaron are praying for them. And that's just what we need, isn't it? Because <laughs> we often deserve punishment. Anyway, Moses said to Aaron, take your censer and put fire in it from off the altar and lay incense on it and carry it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them, for wrath has gone out from the Lord. The plague has begun. So Aaron took it, as Moses said, and ran into the midst of the assembly. And behold, the plague had already begun among the people. And he put the incense and he put, it, he put on the incense and made atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stopped. Now those who died in the plague were 14,700, besides those who died in the affair of Korah. And Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the meeting when the plague was stopped. Ooh, uh, what a chapter. Mm -hmm. Get away from the sons of Korah. That's what the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, didn't he? And get away from the tents of Dathan and Dathan. Uh, yeah, Dathan and why am I mixing that up? Abiram. Anyway, get away from their tents. That's interesting, isn't it? I remember there were times when, when we had experiences where we we felt in a situation that we went, went through where people were were doing something like this and accusing and grumbling and complaining it frightened me it really frightened me i i i don't want to be part of this i don't we must i remember saying to you on different occasions we just we mustn't get caught up in this we mustn't be on the side of people who are grumbling and complaining and I'm looking back on my life, I am so, so glad that we did do that, that we walked away from it and, and took no part in, in that grumbling and complaining against godly leadership. And um, I would just put that out to anyone who's watching. Look, if you see something like this happening, have nothing to do with it. Run away, run away from it for all your worth, because this is what God thinks about it. Now, this doesn't happen in churches. The ground doesn't swallow up people who complain about pastors. But, you know, God still judges people. God still judges and disciplines people. And you don't want to be caught up in that. Anyway, chapter 17. Mm -hmm. Serious stuff, isn't it? And the, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and get from them staffs, one from each father's house, from all their chiefs, according to their father's houses, 12 staffs. You know what a staff is, don't you? It's like a, a, like a stick, a big stick that you would walk with and um, whack a wolf with if you met one. Write each man's name on his staff. And write Aaron's name on the staff of Levi, for there shall be one staff for the head of each father's house. And you shall deposit them in the tent of meeting before the testimony where I meet with you. For the staff of the man whom I choose shall sprout. It's got nothing to do with Brussels sprouts. Thus I will make to cease from me all the grumblings of the people of Israel, 
when they grumble against you. Moses spoke to the people of Israel, and all the chiefs gave him staffs, one for each chief, according to their father's houses, twelve staffs. And the staff of Aaron was among their staffs. And Moses deposited the staffs before the Lord in the tent of testimony. The testimony. On the next day, Moses went into the tent of the testimony, and behold, the staff of Aaron for the house of Levi had sprouted and put forth buds and produced blossoms, and it bore ripe almonds. Now that wasn't because it had access to a little bit of moisture and the others didn't, is it? This is a miracle, isn't it? Overnight, all the way to full blossoms and ripe almonds. Unbelievable. Then Moses brought out all the staffs and brought uh, and be from before the Lord to all the people of Israel, and they looked. Each man took his staff, and the Lord said to Moses, Put back the staff of Aaron before the testimony to be kept as a sign for the rebels, that you may make an end of their grumbling their grumblings against me, lest they die. Thus Moses did, as the Lord commanded him, so he Thus did. did Moses. Oh, well spotted. And the people of Israel said to Moses, Behold, we perish, we are undone, we are all undone, every one who comes near who everyone who comes near who comes near the, to the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. Are we all to perish? And that's where it finishes. <laughs> that's what you call a dramatic end to the chapter. Now, what do you think about that? It's, I, it's really strange to me that they didn't have that response mm. to the ground swallowing up. Mm. Um, Korah and... Um, Dathan and Abiram. It's really, that's really strange because to me it seems like that should be more frightening to them. That's someone at our door. Do you want to get that? Just pause, pause that for a second. Back in a moment. Okay, well that was good. That was just a neighbour neighbor turning up. Now, uh, we, we're done, aren't we? We just need to pray. It is interesting, isn't it, that the people responded to, to this, mm -hmm. though. And God knows what people need, and uh, they, they, they needed to see more proof. God gave it to them, and now they're terrified. Mm -hmm. And, and they're, they're, they're terrified, and they're saying, we're going to perish, we're going we're gonna to perish, we're going to perish. Um, I'm going to say that's a good thing, isn't it? It's a good thing to see fear, um, that this is the fear that they needed in order to stop them from having this grumbling. That's what God said, didn't he? In, in verse 10, he said, put back the staff of Aaron before the testimony. That's, that's inside the ark by the, the testimonies, the, the Ten Commandments there to be kept as a sign for the rebels. Mm. There are always going to be rebels. There, even in churches, there are always going to be rebels because there are always people who don't really believe and there are other, even Christians, who fall into sin and there are always going to be people like this who rebel and grumble, but they need to fear. Mm. And... We don't have Aaron's staff that budded, but we have this chapter. <laughs> and it's, it's, this is a good place to go to remind yourself if ever you feel like you could get caught up in something like this in a church that you're part of, or if ever you feel like this is going on and someone else is getting caught up in it, and you can read this to them and, and pray that the Lord would use it to make them fear grumbling and complaining and rebellion. Mm. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that we would fear it and we pray that we would 
be able to um, be a blessing to those who might get caught up. Thank you for Moses and Aaron falling on their faces, so humble, praying for the people who, who had set themselves against them, praying for people who they would have every reason to resent. And yet, Lord, like our Lord Jesus, they prayed for those who wanted to kill them. Uh, and they prayed for them as if they didn't know what they were doing. And Lord, we praise you for that because we're sinners. And we need you, Lord Jesus, to plead for us. Please pray for us. Um, Lord, have mercy upon us in our rebelliousness and our sin. And don't let us be carried away in the sins of others, we pray. Mm -hmm. Help us to fear you in the right way. We ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. All right, well, good to be back in the Word today. Nice to be doing it in the light. The evenings are getting lighter. And we are going to walk the dog. See you tomorrow. <laughs>